Well, this will be a new one. So, Patreon supporter Trolls Christensen had some credits saved up for those sponsored videos you see every now and then, and figured, hey, he just he went, came out and asked, what if we just sponsor a playthrough of all of Portal? Well, um, yeah, sure, why not? He's got more than enough for that. So, Portal. I have not played this game in a very long time, but I did play it way back when it first came out. I believe 2007, so nine, nine years ago. I'm ancient. I'm not, but that number feels like that. That's that's way too much of my life ago. Jeez. This will be my first time playing this game on a keyboard and mouse, actually, because back when this game came out in 2007, uh, I don't think my computer could run more than Diablo 2. They just drop us off here as the catchiest song ever plays for a while. Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Enrichment Center. We hope your brief detention in the relaxation vault has been a pleasant one. Your specimen has been processed, and we are now ready to begin the test proper. Before we start, however, keep in mind that although fun and learning are the primary goals of all enrichment center activities, serious injuries may occur. For your own safety and the safety of others, please refrain from. Turn back. The portal will open in three, two, one. Oh, I love you. I love you. Immediate reveal of crazy mechanic that we're not used to seeing. Shortly after encountering what's an immediately funny character and some. Unusually low mouse sensitivity, excuse me. And some of you are inevitably going to want subtitles. Unless that's not a thing in here. Am I crazy? There we go. Subtitles, dialogue, yes, dialogue only. There we go. So, we're going to spend some time with Gladys. A.K.A. one of the best written characters in the history of all of video games, I would say. And I don't think I'm alone in that, be in that opinion, really. Wow. I never really thought this game could become nostalgic, but it is. This actually summarizes what is now an entire genre of games that I'm... That's one of my favorite genres of games. How it gets tough. Excellent. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completing each test. First, however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science material emancipation grill will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. For instance, the aperture science weighted storage cube. Can't test that right now though, because the door the door won't open. But soon, soon. It's weird thinking that once upon a time I was all excited about seeing how this was going to probably tie into Half-Life 2 Episode 3. Because <laughs> there's these little, there's little parallels between the two of them that were all interesting. And then nowadays, just none of that. None of that at all. Let's turn on that V-Sync, sorry. Just saw a distressing amount of uh, screen tearing happening there. Good old PC. Didn't have that menu option before. What's your deal? So no references to any challenges of any kind, meaning it's just empty. Chamber 1 of 19. Please place the weighted storage cube on the 1500 megawatt aperture science heavy duty super colliding super button. I did it. I immediately made the mistake of getting stuck in here. So they're introducing us to the idea of moving portals. But of course, I don't have pow uh, power over the portals yet, so I gotta watch through the window and see what comes up. There's our exit! Just so we know, they show that to us first because basic game design just determines like you, you show that to them first. Uh oh, they're, I'm, they're, I'm gonna get stuck in here. No, oh, well, the, well that made it through, <laughs> that made it through. So I tried to click on it to pick it up, and it's actually E. Makes sense. Uh, in this kind of situation, I would reflexively try to click on stuff to pick it up, but E makes sense in this context because of the fact that left and right mouse button are gonna be the portals. Okay. 
Please move quickly to the chamber lock, as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. I love that. <laughs> They are, in fact, not testing what happens if you're on the button for too long. Although that'd be a very strange thing to test. But you gotta control all variables, after all. I am a scientist. Just don't question that, okay? It's fine. So right now, Gladys just seems like a quirky AI. And that is a loading screen. You're doing very well. Please be advised that a noticeable taste of blood is not part of any test protocol, but is an unintended side effect of the Aperture Science Material Emancipation Grip, which may, in semi-rare cases, emancipate dental fillings, crowns, tooth enamel, and teeth. It might lose everything related to your teeth, including your teeth. Just the actual teeth. No big deal. Right? Right. I'm gonna need you real quick. Thank you. Very good. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science handheld portal device. With it, you can create your own portals. These intradimensional gates have proven to be completely safe. The device, however, has not. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially. Most importantly, under no circumstances should you... And there is a surge. Also, we can, t we can test out the field. Yay! I, I can go through it. A uh, gun can go through it. Nothing else can go through it, unless you want to see it die a horrible fate. And you don't want to see that, do you? Do you? I want to point out that this elevator's padded. Maybe it's just me, but that seems odd. Like you're trying to stop test subjects from killing themselves. Or maybe I'm just not around fancy elevators enough that have actual padding or something. Please proceed to the chamber lock. Mind the gap. Good old fashioned. Yep. So we have access to one portal, other portal. To ensure the safe performance of all authorized activities, do not destroy vital testing apparatus. You can't stop me. No one can stop me now. So we have multiple. Oh, we can try. We can just cut them all down now. Safety. Do not destroy vital testing apparatus. Nope. Taking them all with me. Well done. Remember, the aperture science bring your daughter to work day is the perfect time to have her tested. That's concerning. The funny thing is, it's a lab. So when you hear somebody talk about bringing your daughter to work day. You're just thinking that, uh, you're just thinking maybe test her for any sort of infection she might have or something. But this entire game is test chambers. And the more you play the game, the more you get a better respect for what that kind of statement might mean. It's weird how this game doesn't feel like it's aged at all visually. The physics has. Uh, the source engine. Uh, runs like uh, garbage sometimes, <laughs> especially when you have uh, when you're carrying an object around. It starts freaking out sometimes. Welcome to test chamber four. You're doing quite well. So this is actually where you get a lot of the elements of what goes into the design of a game, like the Talos principle, is the idea of these individual chambers, where each it's each each one is a nice controlled environment. And you have this specific element where it's actually like, here's all the possible variables there could be. Here's the ones we're playing with today. So you can get a summary there. And that's nice. Certain objects may be vital to your success. Do not destroy testing apparatus. I remember when early on I would try to... I would try to use this thing. I'm like, surely I can use this thing on buttons. Alas, it does have no use. But... Boom, problem solving 101. So my understanding about how Portal works is that these are relatively small chambers because whenever you uh, open a portal on a wall, I believe the trick is that they're actually generating a second copy of the room, and that copy of the room is access to the portal. And that's why you can see yourself, and that's why everything works out and everything like that. That's supposed to be the technology involved here. Originally, originally pioneered in their game, Narb uh, Narbacular Drop. 
Once again, excellent work. As part of our required test protocol, we will not monitor the next test chamber. You will be entirely on your own. Good luck. So clinical and professional so far. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pretend to be completionist about the cameras because they actually make it difficult later on. But it's, it is amusing to destroy them just because I can. Just because I can. But yeah, it's all framed as being a scientific research situation, which just makes you wonder what they're testing exactly. Testing the gun, sure makes sense, but what? But uh. You don't usually do that with a blind subject. So the idea then is that they're testing the people themselves. And so we immediately don't hear her talking, and it's oddly disconcerting. Boop! Oh, right, we don't have the other portal. Vital testing apparatus destroyed. I guess me walking through the door made it appear. Ta-da! I tried to solve problems that way. Vital testing apparatus destroyed. As a 17-year-old, I was like, yeah, we can just press the buttons with the cameras, we got this. We got this just fine. So our portal's up there. We don't have the orange portal, so we can only control the blue for now. Thankfully, we don't really need much else to get around. Interestingly, portal one is like 75% tutorial in a weird sort of way. Or more like 50% if you're just doing a straight playthrough after more or less knowing what you're doing. Uh, As part of a required test protocol, our previous statement suggesting that we would not monitor this chamber was an outright fabrication. Good job. As part of a required test protocol, we will stop enhancing the truth in three, two. Now that's o that's ominous, isn't it? <laughs> Talking, we're go we're going to stop enhancing the truth, which is a clever. It's a sort of subtle way, or mostly just weirdly confusing, but completely clear sort of way of saying we've been lying to you so far. Isn't that exciting? Hooray! I love being lied to when I wake up in the test chamber with a gun that apparently dissolves teeth. No big deal. It's fine. It's fine. This is all ethical. I want to be uh, doubly clear about that. Ooh. Hi. Hi. While safety is one of many enrichment center goals, the unbelievable. You, subject name here, must be the pride of subject hometown here. Whoopsie. Can I kill myself with this? Nope, it's sealed up. All right, well that chamber's already over. I love that. Like, wow, you must be the pride of the place you're from, which is why we don't know where you're from. We don't even know your name. We've nailed this. Because she's just an AI. Or is she? Or is she? These elevators make up a surprisingly large amount of the experience when you're making a decent pace through it. Warning devices are required on all mobile equipment. However, alarms and flashing hazard lights have been found to agitate the high energy pellet and have therefore been disabled for your safety. Good. Now use the Aperture Science Unstationary Scaffold to reach the Chamber Lock. Unstationary Scaffold. I just want a Portal 3 just for the writing at this point. Are you gonna go back? Okay. <laughs> like, there's other puzzle games out there, to be honest. So I don't necessarily need a Portal 3 just to constantly scratch the puzzle itch, although that will absolutely help. But, damn if they don't just nail writing in a specific way. Uh, they obviously hit a, a peak sort of level with Portal 2 where it was just so fun to listen to things talk in that game because <laughs> it was just in it almost uh, almost too clever <laughs> People have sung their praises enough over this game over the years though that it's it's more or less flawless Although it's easy. It is of course easier to be flawless when you're minuscule in scale when it's this tiny micro game it is not long. Please know that we have added a consequence for failure. Any contact with the chamber floor will result in an unsatisfactory mark on your official testing record, followed by death. Good luck. So these are great because they list elements that may or may not be around. They constantly tease you with this, this uh, idea of cake, which I think is going to be unlit the entire playthrough. For, you know, for reasons. 
But they show the idea like, oh, it'll, it, the, the cube can drop out of its chutes. Don't let it land on you. Don't get hit by things that could kill you. That thing's supposed to go in that hole. These are the relevant things right here. Right here, like, oh no, there's an acid pool. Or some, whatever the hell that is. You'll be in horrible pain. And they're giving you vague hints about elements of what you can do. They show the turret there. But this is my favorite one. This, this testing chamber does not contain an eye washing station. If you get it in your eyes, you have been warned of the precautions that are not available to you. Yeah, if you get it in your eyes, right? Up, 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 hi. All right, just gonna pop you over there real quick. Thankfully, they put a nice little laser over here, sticking across from where the destination is, so you know exactly where to shoot. And because I'm playing keyboard and mouse now instead of the original way I played, uh, it's actually it's actually really easy to uh, aim at these kinds of things. So weirdly, uh, we progress through these chambers, and it says out of 19. So you might think, "Wow, we're really far in this game right now," but really, weird, really, this is just not the game. You know, to be honest, this is this this is really a a tutorial that isn't a tutorial. If you know what I mean, they teach. They teach you how to play by just having you play. Which is the best way to do a tutorial, in my opinion, if your game can handle that. Some games uh, have systems that can't be taught that way, but... A game that can teach you how to play just by playing, like the Witness. Very Whitney. impressive. Please note that any appearance of danger is merely a device to enhance your testing experience. Like, you'll remember that the Witness worked this way, and Steven's Sausage Roll worked this way, and... Talos Principle worked this way. They, they have mechanics. And you figure out them intuitively, and they, 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 t they, instead of having an explicit tutorial, they have a tutorial in the form of, hey, this mission is just gonna throw things at you in a simple fashion, and once you see it in simple form, we'll then iterate on that. The Enrichment Center regrets to inform you that this next test is impossible. Make no attempt to solve it. Isn't that great? I love that. Obviously it's not impossible, because the game keeps going. But just, but the first time you play it, you kind of buy into it. Like, I think I kind of sat here for a moment, thinking that maybe if some time would pass, maybe something would come clear to me. It's like, after all, this is impossible, right? The door the gets open by this. The Center apologizes for this clearly broken test chamber. Like, it, it feels impossible at first, because you're like, well, you, you've introduced the idea that I can't get past this field, so how do I get over there? But they're just introducing the really basic problem-solving skills that you would need to be able to move past these kinds of barriers. Once again, the Enrichment Center offers its most sincere apologies on the occasion of this unsolvable test environment. Eventually, games like the Talos Principle, and even this game itself, like, they iterate on this concept of, like, having to think about more complicated solutions for stuff, because that's, that's the whole joy of puzzle games. This is the entire genre. But at the same time... Frankly, this chamber was a mistake. If we were you, we would quit now. What was great about Talos Principle in particular is that it does what the, what uh, actually the Portal 1 and 2 games also do, which is they like, they introduce the concept of not, not only just thinking outside the box to solve the puzzles, but thinking outside the puzzles to do completely insane things. Fantastic. You remain resolute and resourceful in an atmosphere of extreme pessimism. Both games ultimately introduced the concept that doors... It, that was weird seeing the, the... That was weird seeing the, the elevator come down, by the way. But both of them introduced the concept of just having the, uh... The ability to leave the test chambers. I'll be, be it part of the story, or part of secrets, or part of something. Even The Witness had some elements of, like... Here's what the, pu here's what the puzzle is, and that's the only puzzle, right? And then, if you're extra paying attention... You may find out there's more to it. Hello again. To reiterate, so they give you the tiniest, tiniest hint, which is that they say momentum and nothing else. You don't really get to hear any of the rest of it. It's all noise. They like they like to play with the garbled, gar the garbled, uh, oop, dialogue. There you go. All right, buddy, let's, let's go in there with them, huh? While well, horrible, clingy source engine stuff happens in front of us. Whoa! Didn't realize my portal was upside down at the time. Bye. 
There's some chill music happening right now. Okay, so my portal is... I believe the orange portal is like right... It's above me. Okay. So they're introducing the idea of conservation of momentum. Woo! Spectacular. You appear to understand how a portal affects forward momentum, or to be more precise, how it does not. So you can jump down in a hole and come out of the portal, maintaining the direction you were coming through the portal in, which means falling down through the portal means shooting out just as fast, but now in a horizontal direction because of the change of direction. And this is all texture where you can't fire portals. And I rather frustratingly still don't have a purple po uh, an orange portal, and that's actually kind of bothering me a little bit. And now they just want to now they just have me change around to do the same thing but in reverse. Just to make sure I understand both steps involved here, because, once again, this is a rather carefully crafted tutorial. Momentum, a function of mass and velocity, is conserved between portals. In layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. Yes. 